in this video, we're going to talk about electromagnetism. And this is a fascinating phenomenon in which a shift in an electric field gives rise to a shift in a magnetic field of 90 degrees to the shift in the electric field, vice versa as well. And this might sound very bizarre to you, at least it does to me, or it might sound very obvious to you, maybe you've learned it before. But in any case, I think if you think about it, it is very bizarre because I, I've never learned of any other force field that shifts and then causes another shift in another force field 90 degrees to it. So that's that's kind of bizarre to me. And I've always grown up thinking that magnetic fields and electric fields were two separate things. But here we find out that actually they're very closely related to each other. And physicists actually classify magnetic fields under the, the little umbrella of electric fields. So when we talk about the four forces that are in physics, we have the gravitational fields and gravitational forces, and then we have the electric forces. And then we have the um, strong force and the weak force. And these two are just in the nucleus. So not really applicable for everyday life. Gravity also doesn't really affect us everyday life. Like you're stuck to the earth, yes, but you don't feel the effects of the universe, the gravitational effects of the universe, the other stars, the moon. No. So can say that this is kind of out of the question it largely gets ignored for electric fields we definitely can feel this and and a part of this is magnetic fields so yeah but before we move on to electromagnetism i think we should talk a lot more about magnetic fields magnetic fields can be made in two ways one by the use of an electric current as it is with electromagnetism or with a permanent magnet and this is a diagram of a very, very quintessential certain magnet, permanently magnetized steel or iron or any sort of metal. And the magnetic field lines is what we use to represent the force field. They come out of the North Poles and they go into the South Poles. Now, this is just convention, right? This, we have said this as North and we have said this as South and we have said the arrows as this and that. Um, just like with the electric fields. There's positive charges, and these are coming out, and this is all just a convention. They don't actually look like this. You can't even see the force coming out. So just remember that, but it does help us visualize things. Direction of a field line at any point, and this is also convention, but yes, the direction at any point shows the direction of the force that a free magnetic north pole would experience at any point, just like the one with the electric fields where... The direction of the force line equals the force that is felt by a positive charge in the field. The magnetic fields are strongest when the field lines are closest together. So this is just the system that we've cooked up to visualize these fields a little bit better. But you can see that the magnetic field lines are much closer over here. And so this means that the closer you are to the poles, the stronger the magnetic field is, the further away you are from the poles, the weaker the magnetic field is. And how can we tell that? Because of the closeness of the lines. And obviously, this might be a little bit obvious to you. Obviously, the field is going to be stronger when you're closer to the magnet. But this is how we portray things on a diagram. So now let's delve into a little bit of electromagnetism. When a current flows in a wire, and I think we better look at this first. When a current flows in a wire, there is going to be a magnetic field that is created around the wire. And so you can see that I've drawn a current carrying wire. This is the wire, the white one, and it, the current is flowing this way. And this is what I have decided to make it, conventional current. And what is fascinating is that when this wire, this current, flows, that means the electrons are flowing within the wire and the electric field is shifting. When that happens, a ma magnetic field is formed around the current carrying wire and it goes around like this. It goes around like this. And you can see that this is the arrow, so it should be like this, like this, like this. And you see that it is closer together the closer you are to the wire. And it gets further apart the further you are from the wire. So what can we conclude by this? Well, first of all, they're circular. They're centered on the wire. 
and I've also written magnetic fields closer the nearer they are to the wire, which means when they're nearer to the wire, then they are less spaced apart. And so that's what I've just said, which means that it's stronger, the magnetic field is stronger when we are close to the wire. Lastly, reversing the current also reverses the magnetic field, which means if you make the conventional current flow here, then these little guys are going to all change directions and they're going to start flowing the other way around. So you can take a wire and coil it in many different ways to make all sorts of different shapes of magnetic fields. But I would say the two most important things that you should know is that we can coil this wire around to make a solenoid and a flat circular coil. Now solenoid is when you coil it many times over and what it does is that it makes a shape it makes a magnetic field that looks just like the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Take a look at that, and then take a look at that. It's very similar. It's just like this is the North Pole because the field lines are coming out here, and this is the South Pole because the field lines are going in here. So, obviously, the field lines are also coursing through the wires in and of itself, which does not, that we don't draw that when we draw an actual mag magnetic bar, right? We only draw it like this and that, that's where we end things. We don't tend to draw it through the bar, running through the bar. And the difference is that you have to draw it through the bar when it comes to talking about a solenoid. But you know, as you can see here, the, the general shape is very similar. And this is why we use solenoids a lot because it's very convenient. So coil is used because it concentrates the magnetic field and if you don't coil it a lot, you're going to have a weaker magnetic field, just like the flat circular coil. This, you can see it's only one, and I've drawn a lot of field lines here just to make it a little bit more detailed, but in reality, this is going to have more field lines because this is going to be stronger than the flat circular coil. But yeah, similarly shaped, this is much stronger, so solenoids are used much more. Its strength can be greatly increased by adding a ferrous, which means iron-rich, material, and this is a core, right? Which means maybe you can add a cylinder of iron, which is obviously going to be ferrous because it's literally iron. It gets magnetized too, so this iron bar will also get magnetized, and this produces a much stronger field because the magnetized iron, its field lines are going to add on to the field lines of the solenoid, and then you're going to have a huge, huge magnetic field that's very strong. So have you ever wondered why there are certain magnetic objects. Does it intrigue you why certain metals are ma magnetized and then they can stick onto your refrigerator, but some metals are just regular? Well, we're going to learn about that right now. So we know what makes an um, electric, sort of like electrically charged object, right? Let's say you have a certain metal bar and then you add electrons to it. If you keep adding electrons to it, it's going to be negatively charged and this negative charge is going to be the one that makes the field so you know field lines are going to go in obviously because this is negatively charged and you're going to have something that looks like this and, and you're going to have this thing now in a magnet it's a little bit confusing because one object has one side where the magnets the field lines are coming out and then it has another side where the field lines are going in Whereas on a negatively charged object, that's a little bit confusing because a charge is a charge. An electron wouldn't have one side that's positively charged and one side that's negatively charged, although that may be possible with electro electric induction. But yeah, so that's why magnets are a little bit weird. And in addition, they don't get demagnetized, right? For electrically charged objects, maybe you can touch it or something. And then the electrons are going to flow to your hand and it's, it's going to lose its charge. You can't do that with magnets. Seems to me that you can't really demagnetize magnets. And we're going to talk a little bit about that maybe in a future video. But usually permanently charged magnets are permanent. And that's it. And you buy a magnet and it stays permanent. And you don't need to worry about getting a new one. So how is it actually made? Well, electric these magnetic objects are essentially found because certain rocks have magnetic tendencies. So they were found before electricity and electric forces. All magnetic fields are created by moving charges, which means electromagnetism 
is just what magnetism is. There is no magnetism in and of itself because even the little rocks we find that are not obviously electromagnetically induced, they are also actually created by moving charges. These rocks have a magnetic field because the little electrons inside them are constantly moving. So let's take a look at how that works. This is also the case in a permanent magnet. Each electron represents a tiny current as it circulates around the atom. And for that, we have to take a look at this. Now, imagine this, these little circles, to be a part of a rock. And this is a magnetic rock. What happens and what is special about these magnetic elements is that their electrons flow and i say flow because their actual action is not really flowing but more on that in some other topic in and the gist of it is that they flow in the same direction all of the atoms in this element they are flowing in the same direction whereas for random objects like maybe i don't know wood the atoms in wood their electrons might be flowing here, and then this one, this guy's electrons may be flowing here, and it's like completely random, right? You don't, like, they have a random way of flowing their electrons. But what's so special about these permanent, like, or these magnetic elements is that their electrons flow in the same direction. Well, that means that you can see that when you're inside, when you're within the, the lattice itself, you can see that the current, the electron over here is flowing in this direction, the electron over here is flowing in this direction. This is flowing down, this is flowing up. So all of the little things, they cancel out except for the outermost flow. This flows here, this flows here. It's continuously flowing until you can consider the outermost atoms to have a constant current around the surface of the metal or the rock or the magnet or whatever you're talking about it. So we have a current that is flowing. And it's not really a current because it's just a little electrons doing their thing and that compounds, but it, it, we can think of it as a current because the electron and the electric fields are going to be shifting. So what that creates is a magnetic field, 90 degrees, and then that's why we have these patterns. Basically, the current is flowing in this direction here, and that creates a magnetic field like this, let's say. That means that the current flowing this way is the opposite as this, so the magnetic field lines has to be in the opposite direction, and that's why we get this shape in a magnet, where, you know, if you, if you really, like, draw it nicer, drew it nicer than I did, you would get the shape of a magnet. That's the shape of a magnet. That's the magnetic field right there. And that's how it happens, essentially. So in the ferrous ma material, such as iron, the magnetic fields combine together. In other materials, they cancel out. As I told you about wood, the, the electrons, they don't move all together. They move all scattered apart, and therefore, it doesn't actually have this effect. And this is why magnetic materials are so special. So we might as well learn about the right-hand grip rule. This is a rule that will help you get the magnetic field when a wire has current running through it. So basically, take your right hand and make this like thumbs up movement, but then wrap your fingers, like take it, make, your, make sure your fingers are like that, like straight, and then you wrap them around in that motion. Basically, that motion is the magnetic field and this arrow, wherever your thumb is pointing to, is the electric current direction conventionally. So picture you, and just ignore these blue words for the moment. Imagine you have a wire again. Remember that example we knew earlier. And we have this. Let's say I told you that the current in this wire was running downwards. Try it right now. Point your thumb downwards and rub your hand around it. If you did it correctly, the motion of your little four fingers should show you that the magnetic field is in direction, this direction. This is just a simple way of memorizing what happens, so nothing too scientific or theoretical. And yeah, some symbols to know is that this signifies a current that's coming out of paper. In this case, it's out of your screen. 
This signifies a current going into the paper. In this case, it's out of your screen. So try to do the thumb motions. This one, point your finger towards the screen and then curl your fingers around. This one, point your thumb out of the screen and then curl your fingers around. You should get these patterns. So that's what happens. Now, the idea that field lines emerge from North Poles are and they go into South Poles is simply a convention. This is something we've already talked about before. But what's interesting about the right-hand grip rule is that they're not just useful for these wires. They're also useful for solenoids. For solenoids, we switch it around. The thumb is going to point towards the magnetic field, so the north, obviously, and the fingers are going to signify the current. Because, you know, the fingers kind of look like the wires, like the current wires that are coiled. And so I think a very easy way to memorize it is that your hand literally just looks like whatever you're trying to make. When you have a solenoid, you have something like this. And then you have a bunch of field lines going in. And that's the, the magnetic field, right? And this is the electric stuff. So when you are trying to use the right hand grip rule for this... The circular thingies, they look like your fingers. So your little fingers curling around, that's going to signify the magnetic field. And your thumb's going to signify this. On the other hand, this coil also looks like your finger. So the conventional current is going to be represented by your fingers. And your thumb's going to represent the magnetic field. Yeah, so that's basically how I memorized it. But all in all, this is nothing theoretical. This is just something that is very handy in an exam. <laughs> So this is just a graphical representation of what I've just said, which is that if you have this, imagine wrapping your fingers around a wire. That is what the magnetic fields will be. Imagine having your fingers around the solenoid. That's what your fingers are going to signify. So it's just a simple thing that you can do with your hands to um, figure out what direction the magnetic field is. And it's also very important to remember that this is for the right hand. If you use the left hand, you will be wrong. You will get the completely different wrong direction. So remember to watch out for that. And I think that's about it when it comes to electromagnetic fields and what electromagnetism generally is. I hope it helped. And do keep updated for future videos I will post also about electromagnetism. Thank you for watching.